Good morning, Gateway South Osborne. Welcome here. Morning, morning, morning. Come on in. If you're in the foyer, come find a seat. We're going to get started right away. It's great to see so many people here on this beautiful November long weekend. It's phenomenal weather. And uh, we have a great morning ahead of us. Uh, we have Pastor Nikki bringing the word. Come on. And uh, yeah, we got lots to look forward to. But we're going to get right into worship. So if you want to come in, uh, find, find a seat and stand up. We are going get, to get right in uh, worshiping here. And I just want to posture us with, uh, with a psalm, one of my favorite psalms, and, uh, and one that I read regularly here. And uh, the psalm is this. Uh, Psalm 103 says this, Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things that he does for me. He forgives all my sin and he heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagle's. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to those who are treated unfairly. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and he is merciful. He is slow to get angry and he is filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. And he has removed all our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. Why don't we pray? God, I thank you so much this morning for, uh, for who you are. God, I thank you um, for your kindness for your love. Thank you that we can gather to worship um, you in this place today. And uh, we just ask for, for your Holy Spirit to become um, real to us uh, in a new way. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for who you are. And, um, and we want to worship you and give you back what you've given to us. In, uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give me one sec. Yeah. 
The power of our God, you shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God, you shine in the shadows. Stand against, let's sing one more time. Oh, in Almighty Fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. And nothing can stand against the power of our God. I'll fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. It all got the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet. I'll sing through the night. It all got the battle belongs to you. So when I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. It all got the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet. I sing through the night. It all got the battle belongs to you. It all got the battle belongs to you.
Creation sings your story In your name The angels will bow Yet the earth will rejoice Your people cry out The Lord of all the earth We shout your name Shout your name Filling up these skies with for that this morning, Lord, in Jesus' name. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And how great the chasm that lay between us How that I could not Desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness. 
tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. And who could imagine? So great a mercy, what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. And the cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me His own. A beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Oh, Jesus Christ. Why don't we sing that again? The cross is spoken. And the cross is spoken. I am forgiven. Because the King of Kings calls me his own and beautiful savior i'm yours forever oh jesus christ my
thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And then came the morning that sealed the
to walk in a worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. 13, he has, verse 1, or chapter 1, verses 13, he has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transfer, transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 2, 13 to 15, and you were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh. God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumph over them in him. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through the Father, through him, Amber was giving us, starting us to do a clap, and it was like I could feel everyone else wanted to clap with her. So let's just give the Lord a praise offering, a clap offering, thanking Him for what He's done. Hallelujah, Lord. God is good, and all the time, God is good. Now, before we transition, I just want to do one thing because you, if you don't know, that we are still in Remembrance Weekend. And we want to do this as Remembrance Weekend is very important for us as we acknowledge the courage and the sacrifice of those who have served their country and acknowledge our responsibility to work uh, for the peace they fought hard to achieve. During times of war, individual acts of heroism occur frequently. Only a few are ever recorded and receive official recognition. But we want to people be a people who remember all the time. So we're just going to have a moment of silence. And first of all, what we are so thankful for what God has done for us, that he is the one that really brings the ultimate victory. But we are so thankful for people who have literally given their lives so that we too can be free. Let's just have a moment of silence. Lord, we simply understand what it means to have someone to die for us. We as Christians fully acknowledge the blessing when someone would lay down their life. Jesus, thank you. And we thank you for many people who have done so in helping and making sure that what we have is freedoms. We thank you for people who serve every day, who volunteer and who do those things. We thank you, Lord, for um, courage. And Lord, we pray that this morning we too would be courageous. Lord, we thank you that we too could be people who live and exemplate that kind of willing to put our lives down for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So turn to your neighbor and say, I'm so glad you're here. Don't lie. Don't lie. That is not biblical. That is not of God. You got to be honest. You got to be honest with that. Well, we are going to do this, so we are going to transition to give uh, time for the kids to go to kids' ministry and release those for fusion. So youth, you have fusion today. We're going to give a couple minutes, five minutes or so to greet one another. And for those who are online, you get to go and get a coffee or do something really quickly. So five minutes, and we'll be right back, and we're going to jump into some announcements and then get into the Word of God. So again, have fun. Don't, don't, don't leave us. We, we want you to be here. Don't tune out. So we want you here.
Again, this is the part of church that we absolutely, again, love. This is the part that when we, we really appreciate it. After when the pandemic came and we couldn't do this, this is the part that made us really appreciate. So, again, thank you for joining us this morning. I want to thank those that have joined us online as well. Uh, my name is Pastor Norm. I am, again, the senior pastor here in the Gateway South. Uh, but I want to welcome you as long as you also welcome my wife. She is the associate pastor. And Kevin, who is our administrative pastor, or pastor of administration, actually, of all the Gateway. Now, a couple things we want to do is, again, the best way to get a hold of us, connect with us, is through our website. So go to our website, click on that guest contact, and we will make sure that Chris Puhatch takes you for lunch. I know that's going to happen. It is so for sure going to happen. He, I only pick on him because I love him. Anyway, here we go. A couple things we want to also just do. We want to thank God for all that he has done in, in giving. He, we, we give because he first gave to us. We've been singing about that this morning, about how the Lord, first of all, gave his one and only son. And giving is how a part of that expression, is part of that worship. But I do believe this. It says in the Bible that we're meant to be cheerful givers. We're not supposed to do it out of compulsion that, oh, I, this is some sort of obligation. And, and, and no, he actually wants it from our heart. So it is worship. So we're going to pray for the offering. But I also want to do this. Um, I want to pray for people that too, that it, there's sometimes a tough time to give in the offering. And I felt like the Lord just said, let's pray again for the needs of people around us that need positions or jobs or things like that. Walter, I miss Walter because Walter is that guy that goes, and Lord, we just pray for the cash. And it's like, okay, how do you put it any more blunt redneck? I don't know. But anyway, that, we miss you, Walter. Let's just pray. So, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful morning that we get to give as you first gave to us. And, Lord, we want to do that cheerfully, and we want to do that, Lord, with all our hearts. And we thank you, Lord, but I want to specifically pray for the Lord, those that are needing positions and jobs. That, Lord, they would see your provision. It's not wrong for us to say, Lord, pray for your daily bread. But how more is it important for us to pray for one another? So, Lord, I lift up to you those that have needs this morning that you would supply all their needs according to your riches and glory. And all God's people said, amen. So how many of you know that we are so blessed with a wonderful women? How many of you know that? Amen. Yeah, hands up if you see. And uh, yeah, you, girls, you can put your ladies, you can put your hands up too as well. Men, you're, it doesn't just the men have to do it. We are so blessed to have uh, ma ladies that are gathering and ministering to one another. And we have actually a Ladies Connect coming this Saturday. So coming up this week, Saturday night, I believe it's going to be at 7 o'clock. They're going to have a great time. Now, how are they going to do it? Well, if any of you want to find out how you can really love each other, play a board game. You find out the true nature of love when it comes through board games, fun games like that. So they're going to be doing stuff to connect with that. And obviously also just praying for another. And, and I believe this is incredible. I heard the amazing Vanessa Woolman is going to be speaking and sharing. Ooh, ah, come on, guys. So you want to be there? Vanessa's going to have a great time with you guys. And we just want to pray a blessing over you guys. The other thing that we want to do is being a blessing is we are a blessing to those around us. And for those of you who don't know, we do a food hamper in Christmas time. We have this Christmas food hampers that we like to help those that maybe just need help or struggling, whatever. Now, again, it's very important to this because today is the last day for if you know somebody that you think Oh, next Sunday, so make sure you get your announcements right. And Della's like, don't get it wrong. Next Sunday is the last day for telling if you would like to maybe ask, put a suggestion for somebody that you think could do with a food hamper, and then we're going to be going through uh, just getting, collecting stuff for people. And again, if you know anyone, please uh, talk to us, talk to Della, and we will be able to fix, work that out together. And also, when, how many of you guys know that family is a good thing? That's why we have family meetings. Amen. We have a church family forum coming up. And for all of those that know, it's forced family fun. So we are going to be doing this. Uh, November 28th, Thursday, uh, we have our GSO family uh, forum. And again, we're going to cover a lot of things. We, we have some very big stuff we're working through. We have staff changes and updates. Uh, we have the 2025 draft budget that we're going to be sharing with you guys. And also a very important eldership update and congregational response. We're also going to be talking about what's happening with the Christmas outreach. There's lots of stuff. And I did think that we should bring some snacks this time, right, guys? I think it's only fair. So here, here. I said here, here. Uh, finally, we're going to ask Amber to come on up. She's going to share us 
uh, with this, and we have one more with Heidi, so. Ah, after you. All right, so uh, many of you know Terrence is overseas right now and also Walter and Audra. So today, if you would like to send a little greeting, you can come find me. I'm gonna take a little video. Hi, Walter, hi, Audra, we miss you, whatever you wanna say. Uh, Caleb or Tamara, is Tamara here? Caleb, come find Caleb after the service if you'd like to send a little greeting to Terrence. It can be 10 seconds, 20 seconds. We just wanna send them something to brighten up their week. Awesome, right on. Well. Uh, and again, I, I just want to say, church, there's two things that I, I wanted to give an appreciation, because that's part of, so I, was, I was sitting here this morning, and I'm thinking about churches, about people, and when people are just serving and doing things. Um, this isn't scripted, it was just off the top, and I thought, I really wanted to, to, to do this uh, this morning. Um, for those of you that don't know, we're a pretty small church, so you know, online, you don't know how many are actually in here, but we're a pretty small church. And in order to keep the church going, we have people that help sometimes doing jobs that I think are doing amazing. Like, for example, uh, Michelle Sawatsky. Did you know that she actually has been hired as our janitor and she's been doing an amazing job? Um, some people say, really, Norm, you're going you're gonna to thank somebody who cleans the church? Absolutely. Absolutely. Every week that we come in, I just, I said to her, Michelle does an amazing job. I mean, I'm not joking. Like, there's, there's some people that literally, when they do things unto the Lord, because you can see there where they're going over and taking the dust, you know, thing, which I would never even dream of. Like, what? What, what, do you, what is that instrument? What is that weird thing? I don't know what that is. My wife has tried to convince me that's a duster. I don't believe it, but... But Michelle, you do such an amazing job. And I felt like the Lord just wanted me to acknowledge how much we are blessed by all you do. So with that, as I'm just being obedient, I want to ask my wife to come up. And can I pray for you, honey, as we jump into God's word? Lord, I just want to thank you for this um, morning, for your word. And I thank you for, Lord, it's powerful. It's like, a, it's like a two-edged sword, sharp, dividing between soul and spirit. Lord, just not our, just our emotions, and it's not guiding that way. It's, Lord, what the spirit says. And your spirit brings truth. It brings life. It counsels. It guides. It brings transformation. Your word never goes void. And I'm praying that right now, Lord, that as Nikki speaks, she speaks as that who brings your word, and it's your authority from your word. And Lord, bless her as we receive. Give us ears to hear and the hearts to listen. And all God's people said, amen. 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 How are we doing? Good. Okay. Well, I am going to go off script for 30 seconds as well. It's a theme today. Um, I want to actually mention something that is a miracle that I have seen happening in my own family at home in Whitehorse. Hi, Mom and Dad. I say that every time. You guys don't know. I have parents who watch from the, the Yukon Territory every week that we're in church. Well, I want to tell you something. Many of you know my dad is battling cancer. And if you didn't know, you do now. Well... His cancer is one where his blood cells don't replenish. So his red blood cells, they won't replenish. His white blood cells haven't been replenishing. And so he just, every two to three weeks, he needs a blood transfusion. And that's really what keeps him going. It's, it's like his cup just pours out, pours out, pours out. It's empty. Okay, let's pour back into it. That's kind of like what's happening in his body. Well... They told me just recently, something's happening. His white blood cells are stabilizing. This is a miracle. Yeah. It is a miracle. Like, this is God at hand in his body. And so I want to just pray more of that over you, Dad. And for anybody else in our church, if you say, I need a miracle like this, I need God at work in my body, hey, let's keep going, and, and I, I'll, I'll be here after the service. I'm, I'm, I'm good to go for praying for that. So, I just wanted to share that with you at the beginning. Thank you. So, last week, Norm climbed a ladder. That was pretty exciting, eh? Um, in fact, it was, it was 
it was most exciting when he dropped that ladder. I think we all got woken up really quickly. Um, but it was a really good illustration of when we are striving, we're striving to be a good Christian or to attain God's love through what we do. And, and, and literally, Norm just said, drop the ladder. Instead, just invite Jesus to be at the center of our lives because Jesus is enough. He's literally God himself, and, and, and through his life and his death on earth, um, he's made us holy and blameless. That's who we are before God. Like, that's a wow. Like, wow, this is what God has done for us. So now God sees me. He sees you. He sees us through the filter of Jesus' work on the cross. And, and right now, literally, I'm not clothed in rags. I mean, that's a good thing. Uh, I'm clothed in the pure, spotless robes of Jesus. That's what I'm clothed in right now because of his work on the cross. And because of that, I can put on the character of Christ. It's his Christ clothing me, his character clothing me, because I'm already clothed in his pure, spotless robes. So Jesus, literally at the center, he clothes us in God's character. He enables us to have what um, Norm talked about last week, compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience. We bear with one another and we forgive one another, and I know we need to do that on a regular basis. Jesus at the center changes our relationships. That's the baseline. Jesus at the center will change our relationships. I want to highlight one verse right now, and it's Colossians 3.14. It was in Norm's passage last week. And above all, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. You know, love is the binding agent for God's character in, in, in action in our lives. In fact, I have an illustration for us. I thought Norm can't just use a ladder. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have one too. Okay, so here it is. Okay, so love is the binding agent for God's character to be in action in our lives. There we go. That looks pretty good, eh? Okay, I didn't bake that one. <laughs> I'll show you the one I baked in a minute. Um, love is the binding agent. This loaf of bread has flour and oil. It may have eggs, but I doubt this one does. But those binding agents hold it together. And so what we have here is a loaf of bread that is going to be really delicious. It looks great. It actually, it's, it's, it's made perfectly, okay? Now that is what bread should look like. Now I'm going to show you what bread might look like if we don't have the right binding agents in it. Or maybe they're not the proper amounts. Listen, my loaf of bread has all of the same ingredients in it as this, but not in the right proportions. <laughs> so there you go. So that should be a loaf of bread. That should be looking like this. But listen, I... I, I didn't put in the right amount of flour. I didn't put in the right amount of oil. In fact, I had to dig like this to try and get the loaf out. I did an okay job. Literally, if the binding agents aren't in the right proportions, if they're not there, it doesn't work out. That's like love in our relationships. Love is the binding agent. If it's not there, look at that. Last one. So here we are. This one, it has yeast, water, salt. I think that's it. It doesn't, oh, sugar. It doesn't have the flour or the oil. Do you think this one will be very good at all? It's literally unpalatable. So this is like literally, love is the binding agent of our relationships. If we don't have love, look, this is, this is an illustration of what happens. Okay, now, so love is that binding agent for all of God's characteristics in our lives. And if we don't have love, things flop. 
bottom line, right? The bread of our lives doesn't turn out. Interestingly, after Paul exhorts us to put on Christ's character, and he talks about love binding it all together, he then goes right into family relationships and work relationships. Now, this is where Jesus at the center should be the most evident in our lives. It's in our closest relationships. Literally, love binds us. So let's read Colossians 3, 17 to 24. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Bond servants, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. For the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done, and there is no partiality. Masters, treat your bondservants justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Nikki, is this passage even current? Is that what somebody's asking in this congregation today? Isn't this just ancient teaching? Does this have any relevance to us today? Well, I want to tell you it is relevant and it is current. Family has always been the very foundation of our society. You know, this was literally revolutionary teaching. It was so countercultural in that time. This was not something that, that they would have even heard of. It was revolutionary, it was countercultural then, and I'm telling you, it is revolutionary and countercultural now. Jesus was breaking those cultural assumptions of his time, and he was bringing value and honor to women and to children and to slaves. This is what he said through Paul. In this verse, he said, husbands love. Do you know this wasn't even mandated in in the Greco-Roman family? It wasn't mandated in Jewish, Jewish law. It wasn't until Jesus that this came into place. Love. So back then, slaves were literally a part of the, the family unit, and they were part of the very closest relationships people had. And that's why the slaves are included in this passage. They were considered family. So Paul, Paul says in Christ that the hierarchy and slavery, it's no more. Christ is in all. He is all and in all. And we see that in Colossians 3.11. So most modern day scholars um, would parallel the master-slave relationship to the work environment, bosses and workers. So this might help you understand why you might feel like your boss is a slave driver. I tried, I told, Norm said, you should tell a joke and you know what I said, yeah, the problem's gonna be the delivery. (laughs) So hey, you might understand if your boss is a slave driver. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. It's funny. I'm so bad at them. Okay, Jesus is still breaking those cultural assumptions about family and work today. He calls us literally love one another. The world really is going to know we're Christians. How? By our love for one another. That's how the world knows who we are. Literally today, family looks different than ever before. Uh, Family is literally under attack. Forever commitment is optional. And and so when we put on Christ's character, when we we love, then our families are going to have a defense from the enemy's attack, and and the enemy won't have as much opportunity to break down the family unit. 
So there will be a father and a mother to love their children. And there will be a, an entire lifetime together. And, and the back door is literally going to be shut. So we're not going to fall to the temptation to put on that old clothing. I am not falling to the temptation to sin. I will not have that temptation, not at home or at work. Why? Because Christ is clothing me in his character. Our relationships, we're gonna, they will withstand the onslaught of this age. And that's why this is countercultural. Because the world doesn't even know what family is now. We are countercultural. So Jesus at the center should be the most evident in our closest relationships. Love binds us in the marriage relationship. Put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Do you know, in this passage, Paul is addressing the needs of both husbands and wives. And when he's talking about wives submitting to their husbands, he's actually saying that this is what men need to feel loved. Shanti Felton, writer of the book For Women Only, what you need to know about the inner lives of men, she quotes a survey she did. And this is what was found. Did you know three out of four men would exchange feeling that their wives loved them if they could instead feel that their wives respected and trusted them? That was a survey. Men love the respect and trust of their wives. In fact, respect feels like love to a man. Loving your man the way he needs, requ uh, needs requires that he needs to feel your trust and admiration. But it really takes a choice, this respect. We don't always feel like it, but the effect of our res respect is so tremendous. Felton's survey showed that the men felt that they really couldn't become the strong, trustworthy, loving men they wanted to be without that unconditional support and affirmation from their wives. Um, I've actually had to learn this point in my own life, okay? So Norm's a storyteller. Actually, he's a much better storyteller than me. That's why he preaches more than me. Um, he, he may not get all the details right about his stories, though, okay? Um, I'm, not, I'm not throwing him under the bus, but you might know this. Some of you who know him well might know this, okay? Okay. But I've learned that when I correct him publicly, even about a wrong date or maybe a detail that's a little miscommunicated, he literally feels undermined. And in, in essence, he, it's, it's like this feeling of not being loved or, 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 or such like that. And I've learned it all too often. In fact, we've had some conversations after the fact where he has to tell me, Nikki, you can't do that. <sighs> I'm sorry, I undermined you. And um, I'm learning that my respect in this area communicates love to him. Christina Wilson paraphrased it this way. This is her take on this verse. Wives, yield your right of way to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. This, that lit this literally means respect, show honor, let him lead. Do you know, we women, I have to tell you, we're pretty good leaders of our own rights. We really are. And um, our husbands, um, we have the opportunity to help them by letting them lead. I think I... I'm, I'm trying to learn that in our own relationship. In fact, I had a revelation from the Lord back in our early days. It was like a download that God told me. He said, Nikki, I really want this man to grow in his calling. I really have a calling on his life. And I, um, I was like, yeah, I see that, Lord. He said, are you willing to, to really honor him into that calling? And I said, yes, I am, Lord. And he said, okay, let him lead. And I feel like God has really given us a mutual ability in this relationship that he's showing me how to let my husband, how to honor my husband's leadership. So ladies, I want to ask us today, 
How are we in our own relationships, whether it's with our husband or with someone else that's not our husband, how are we in our relationships putting on love by showing respect? How are we doing that? Ladies who are married, how can we champion our husband's growth and leadership? So, in the marriage relationship, we also have husbands love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Really, in this passage, there is one person, and this is in every biblical passage that speaks to the family code, there's one person that's tasked to love, and that's the husband. I don't know if you've realized that before. Although Paul starts with the wives in this passage, he's really putting the weight of responsibility on the husband. The husband's role in the family is literally the binding agent. Husbands, your love will help your, the bread of your family look better, be better. It's a little different than the spin we usually hear, eh? We, we know that wives, they're intrinsically nurturers and, and, and love is intrinsically a part of our makeup. That's probably why wives aren't mandated that they have to love. It's gonna come on them naturally. But the husband is meant to use his platform as leader to put on love. This is Christ's character. Put on love so that his wife and his family, they can also put on the character of God in their lives. And then they respond appropriately in their own family roles because the character of God is being put on. Literally, Paul's instructions, they change everything. The love that is being um, talked about here, which is defined, it's defined as a sacrificial, other-centered love. It's not based on how I feel. I may, he may not feel like loving me on a daily basis. I hope he does. But it's an act of will. It comes from the resolve to put others before ourselves. So this is what it means scripturally. 1 John 3.16 this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Sacrificial love is laying down your life for another. And Ephesians 5, 29 to 20, 25 to 29 parallels um, this Colossians passage, and it beautifully communicates the husband's command to love. It says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church. This is the kind of love that a man is, is uh, mandated to have. Give yourself for your family. Sacrifice your very life for your family. Does this look like the man is meant to lord his, his leadership over his family? No. No, that's not what it looks like. I'm gonna tell you though, this type of love, it's pretty much impossible without the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why he has been given to us. The Holy Spirit is given to us so that his power is made perfect in our weakness. So the Holy Spirit pours love for our families into us. It's his job to do it. Do you know, I can't love like the Holy Spirit. You can't love like the Holy Spirit. It's his power in you that gives you the ability. It's his power in you that puts you in submission to Christ's authority in your life. Literally, why is the husband tasked to love? It's because he's meant to model love for his family. When he models love, his family will respond in love. So men, I wanna ask a couple questions. How are you putting on love? How are you being the binding agent in your own families? 
Are there any attitudes that need to be put off? Any sinful attitudes that you need to put off because that's not Christ's character in your life? What is a way you can sacrificially love your wife or your family? And I do want to ask, do you feel like you have the Holy Spirit's power to do this? Do you feel like you have the Holy Spirit's power to accomplish your calling? And if you think, no, I don't have it, let's pray for the Holy Spirit over you today. If any of you feel compelled, I don't have this, let's pray for the Holy Spirit's power today. So Jesus at the century also will be most evident in our closest relationships in the parent-child relationship. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Then it says, fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Remember, love is the binding agent. Fathers, you literally have an important role to play in this. In fact, um, from Malachi 4, 6, it talks about the great day of the Lord. And he says, he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Did you know the father child relationship is linked to healing in the land maybe that's why we're so broken in in our country because we have so many broken families where dad isn't present and this is where we get to in the the season we're in say god help us help us to love god would you show what mending the relationships of fathers and children look like So as dads, as parents, put on this character of Christ, as they put on Christ's love, as they come under the headship of Christ in their homes, then this is what happens for kids, okay? They have a more willing obedience to the authority of the parents in their lives. They come to understand faith because faith is modeled for them. Literally, obeying parents is like pleasing the Lord. So out of faith in Christ, this is what happens. Children are able to come under. Literally, they come under the leadership of their parents. Children, (laughs) they imitate the behaviors they see. Fathers, don't provoke your kids, lest they become discouraged. You know, when our kids were little, uh, Norm had to learn how to not provoke them. He always thought it was a lot of fun. He would, they would start out having fun, they would be tussling, they would be having fun, and then inevitably, he wouldn't know where to stop. And somebody would get mad, they'd get wound up, and then they'd lash out at him, and they'd be like, ah, not again. Well, somewhere in here, God gave him a revelation. And they'd be in the middle of this tussle, and there'd be a child starting to get wound up, and he'd be like, hmm? Say no, please. And the child would be like, no, say no, please. And they'd say, no, please. And they'd be like, okay. And he would stop. And... um, And then they learned intrinsically when I'm getting wound up, when somebody in my family is causing um, this angst, this upset, (sighs) no, please. It's it's to this day we do it. Literally, if we're having an issue, all I have to do is look at my husband and say, no, please. And he'd be like, okay. He created it. But it's our code. It's our family rule. And in the moment when the no please happens, the person doing the exasperating has to back down. They need to let the situation diffuse. And then the conversation can continue later. You know, we've we've actually stopped a lot of catastrophes in our home with this rule. So if you want to borrow it, go ahead. It might look funny when you're telling your adult child, say no, please. (laughs) You might have to learn it a little earlier. Um, Love being expressed from the parents will result in a child's willing 
obedience. They respond in obedience. So, like, I was a preschool teacher for so many years, okay? And, um, and I, I think I know how to work with kids pretty well. But sometimes I've noticed this, okay? Um, parents, when they're harsh and controlling, there might be a child's action of obedience happening. The parent says, you do that. The child's like, oh, I guess I better do that. Um, but in their hearts, it's opposite. And, and have you ever heard of the, 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 that, that story where the child was put on timeout? Anybody here? Okay, so a child was put on timeout. He was a little bit of a spitfire child. He, he did it. He went on timeout, and he sat down in the chair, and, and he said, okay, I'm sitting down on the outside, but I'm standing up on the inside. Literally, that is what happens. Parents, we're meant to be modeling God's character for our children. So a child who has been modeled the wrong Christ their entire lives, they might say, hey, I don't want that anymore. That's what they might say. Love and grace modeled in the home results in adults who later in life live in the love and grace of God in their lives. So, parents, we don't have kids in the room. It's fusion today and kids' ministry. So I'm going to task us with this. Let's take time this week to intentionally love our kids. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to empower us to love. And let's take a moment to model love in a potentially explosive situation. That's with our kids, our wives, and our work environments. We have to put on love as a choice. Jesus at the center should be the most evident in our closest relationship. Love binds us in the work relationship. So it says, bond servants, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Masters, Treat your bond service servants justly and fairly, knowing that you have a master in heaven. Literally, in our work environments, it's that testimony of Jesus that makes a difference to the world that, that doesn't know him. So we need the power of the Holy Spirit to put on Christ's character. That's compassion, kindness, humility, weakness, meekness, patience. His power helps us to bear with and forgive one another. This is who Christ is in us. This is the clothing we wear when we go out into this world. So how we interact with the world that doesn't know Jesus is important. Our love of Jesus, our fear of the Lord, enables loving responses to hard situations. Does everybody here have the best work environment? I do. But that might not be the case. We might be in an environment where things aren't good right now. But we can react differently than the world around us. Do we have a boss that treats us wrongly? How do we respond? Do we have peaceable reactions? Those are the ones that show God's love at work in us. And we may have unhealthy work environments, but our healthy reactions are what show Christ in those environments. Who here is a boss? Anybody here a boss? Oh, okay. I'll skip this part. (laughs) Yeah. It's like a father. The father's role, the leader's role. Love is our binding agent. How we treat those we work with will dictate how they they work with us. Our kindness and love, literally in the work environment, actually increases productivity and success. We're called to be agents of love. 
We're called to wear Christ's character in all of our environments. So literally what I told you at the beginning is the Christian family is countercultural. It is. We have a world that doesn't actually understand what family is. And, and family is under attack. We know that. So when we put on Christ's character and when we love like him, our families are going to have a defense. They're going to have the defense, the right defense against the enemy's attack on the family. Then we don't fall into the current cultural ideologies of what family is. Do you know the world yearns? They yearn for the safety and love of a lifelong family. Do you know Jesus becomes appealing when they see that in action in our families? Jesus brings that stability. He brings hope. Literally, Jesus shuts the back door. There's no way out. This is who he is. You might be single here today. You might think, I don't have this. Is this relevant to me? Well, I want to ask you, can you this week ask Jesus to show you where you need to put on love in your own relationships? When we have Christ's character at work in us, that changes everything. We become the testimony that the world needs to see. It's not just our words that testify, it's our lives that testify. I want my life to testify to Jesus. That's who we need to be. The world sees it. And you may have a work environment that frankly, it just sucks. I don't know if any of you have that. But it feels like it's failing. I want to task you this week to ask Jesus, reveal how to put on your love this week. Reveal that to me. How can I put on your love in this less than ideal circumstance? And literally, there's something else. Is there an attitude or behavior that you need to put off? Is there sin that you need to say, Jesus, I'm walking in this. I need to take this off. I need your character. Maybe God will show us some things this week that will revolutionize how we move forward in our families and in our work. Jesus at the center is evident in our closest relationships because love binds us. So this week, try to have love because I don't want that. Actually, I don't even know if that's edible. It means we put on love in our marriage relationships. We put on love in our parent-child relationships. And we put on love at work. Amen. Let's stay here. Um, we want to do is this, and... We want to pray for us then as a church that we would be a people who model it. How many of you just say, Lord, can you fill us with your love so that it is reflected in our families? It is reflected in our kids, our relationships. And I just felt like this is like before Nick gets off, can, we want to pray a blessing over you if you, were, if you want that, for you at home too. It's just like today God's go offering that, saying, I want to clothe you with this so then it's by the power of your spirit, the spirit helping you. And it's really simple. It's a gift. You can receive it. It's like, God, thank you. I want that today. I want to receive that so that in these relationships that you would just be so, something would happen for you, the Holy Spirit working and operating afresh. Would you like that? Mm -hmm. Amen. If you want that, you just close your eyes and we're going to pray a blessing. Mm -hmm. and both Nikki and I are going to pray together over a blessing. Over you. Lord, we thank you for this. There's something powerful about we can ask and command and say, Lord, can you bless? And Lord, we as pastors are trying to model this. We're not perfect. 
There's a lot of times we have to say no, please. There's a lot of times when we're wrestling through our sinful behaviors, putting to death. But I thank you that today you give us something that the world does not have, your spirit Amen. operating and moving in us. So I first of all want to lift up to you husbands and men. I'm asking, Lord, you would bless them right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, as they would ask of you right now, you would fill them with your power so that they can operate, not by their own flesh and not of their own, that is dead. Today, that life of Jesus would be evident and moving in the men in the men. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for the women of our church. We have women in our church who are mothers, who are married, who are single. God, each one of us, you have a calling on Amen. our lives. Yes, Lord. Yep. You have a calling on our lives to be mm. people who put you on. We were once dead in the sin of our lives, in, in the sin of this world, and now you've made us alive in you. Yeah. Lord, I pray that you would help us, you would clothe us, you would clothe us in your righteousness, in your character. And Jesus, in every relationship that we yeah. are part of, Lord, yes, whether sir. we're a wife or whether yeah. we're single, God, I pray that you would, yes, bind us together with bind your it. love. Lord, would you would you teach us how to love? Holy Spirit, we need your power. Holy Spirit, we yep. can't do this. We can't love in our own strength. But Lord, you are God who yep. loves. You are God who is love. Mm. Jesus, yep. we need you. Holy Spirit, mm. empower us today. We yes. need you. Finally, Lord, we lift up to your kids. Father, I want to thank you that you have given us such incredible ability to minister to the next generation, to be fruitful and multiply. It's a dominion mandate. But Lord, I'm asking right now that you would release our kids to the purposes they have. Yeah. I want to pray that you'd call those back that have maybe fallen away. Lord, we ask right now that you would stir in them the calling of God. They would hear you. They would, Lord, as fathers, I pray that we would not exasperate. I pray where kids are exasperated with you, exasperated with church, exasperated with whatever. Today, Lord, we ask that you would fill them with your love, that, Lord, we want to be a people who model that, like the father who is longing for their kids to be home. Lord, we thank you that you can do exceedingly abundantly. You can do exceedingly abundantly. You can help us even in our work and our jobs and everything that we do because yeah. that you are at the center. And all God's people said, amen. amen and amen. Let's all stand. I'm just going to end with this, uh, just a prayer, really, going into our week. And draw me close to you. Never let me go. I lay it all down again To hear you say that I'm your friend You are my desire And no one else will do Cause nothing else could take your place Or feel the warmth of your embrace Help me find a way Bring me back to you Sing your all I want and you're all I want And you're all I've ever needed And you're all I want Help me know you, Annie Sing it one more time, you're all I want in your all I want In your all I've ever needed In your all I want 
last thing I want to do is close with this thought. Maybe today you're actually, was this is bringing up some questions because you actually have been struggling a rough, having a rough time actually with your family. Or maybe you're having a rough time with work. This is the cool part is we can actually go to Father and say, Lord, can you actually do exceedingly abundantly more than we can imagine and bring healing? That somehow you can actually work through the, the brokenness of our world. And so if that's you today, if you're like, I actually would really like prayer for my, I'm having a struggle with this with my marriage, or I'm having a struggle with this with my kids, or I'm having a struggle with this, whatever, or work, please do not leave without getting prayer. You can turn to somebody and say, could you please pray for me? You can do that right there, in your, and if, or if you want to come up, we have a prayer team that will pray for you. We have people who love to pray and ask that God would heal or do whatever you can do. But please do not leave without praying. Because God does exceedingly abundantly when we ask. And don't forget, we're also going to be praying for Heidi. Amen? Amen. So God bless you. Have a great week. You want prayer? You want to pray for Heidi? Come on in. You don't have to go home. You can stick around for a little bit. We don't mind. But we want to bless those that have joined us and have a great week. And we just pray the Lord's love on you and bless you and that you be filled and bound by that love in Jesus' name. Amen? Have a great week. God bless you.